My name is Steve Douthat. I'm a foot and ankle surgeon based out of Eugene, Oregon. Today I'm going to present two cases with bone block subtalar joint arthrodesis using an allosync reconstruction wedge. For my first case, it was a 68-year-old gentleman that complained of left hind foot and ankle pain with walking. He was an airborne veteran. He had been a paratrooper, multiple jumps, and he injured his heel at one point in time. The patient had injections and bracing, but they failed to provide adequate relief. When he came to my office on exam, the x-rays showed arthritic posterior facet of the subtalar joint with loss of height. He had no significant deformity. Uh, he did have crepitus with pain on range of motion of the subtalar joint. My plan for this patient was to do a subtalar joint arthrodesis. In order to regain height, I planned on using an allosync reconstruction wedge. For bony incorporation, my plan was angel BMC, pulverized calcaneal autograft, and allosync expand. For fixation, I was going to use 6.7 and 4.5 millimeter screws. The allosync reconstruction wedge is made out of dense cancellous bone. It comes prehydrated, but you can soak it in BMC or ACP for cell signaling. The instrument tray set has trial sizers, and in this case, I use an Evans specific wedge. This is an intraoperative image showing the allosync wedge. It was a size 18 by 18 by 8. I used an Evans wedge for this particular case, and it was soaked in BMC for cell signaling. In these images, you can see the allosync expand along with the pulverized calcaneal autograft on the left. I hydrated the allosync expand with BMC, and on the right, you can see the allosync expand in the injection syringe. For fixation, I used 6.7 millimeter screws posterior and a 4.5 millimeter screw anterior. You can see my intraoperative fluoroscopy images showing the fixation and alignment. Here you can see a postoperative comparison x-ray with the regaining of Taylor height after insertion of the bone graft. At the patient's six month follow-up, he was walking pain-free. The x-ray showed incorporation of our graft and we have clinical photos also showing the skin incisions. For the second case, I had a 57-year-old female that complained of right hind foot pain with weight bearing. She had a history of an open calcaneal fracture repaired by a trauma surgeon elsewhere. On exam, the radiograph showed prior ORF of the calcaneal fracture with fractured hardware that had been removed. She had loss of calcaneal height, significant subtalar joint arthritis. Her foot was in a rectus position. She didn't have any varus deformity. She had subluxing perineal tendons from the lateral calcaneal blowout. She had an equinus contracture. I was able to hear her lateral calcaneal artery on Doppler. This is an x-ray showing the loss of calcaneal height. You can see a decreased Bowler's angle and an increased angle of Gassain. My plan for this patient, once again, a subtalar joint arthrodesis. For the equinus contracture, I was gonna do a percutaneous Achilles tendon lengthening. For the subluxing perineal tendons, I had to do an exostectomy of the lateral calcaneal wall, possible groove deepening, and possible perineal tenodesis. For the loss of calcaneal height, once again, I was going to use an Evans reconstruction wedge. For bony incorporation, my plan was for Angel BMC and Allosync Expand. And for fixation, I planned on using 6.5 and 4.3 millimeter headless screws. This is an image showing the Allosync wedge, which was hydrating in BMC. For this case, I used size 20 by 20 by 10. I also hydrated my Allosync Expand with BMC. For this case, I did a lateral approach so I could address both the perineal tendons and the subtalar joint fusion through one incision. You can see the Evans wedge placed in the subtalar joint fluoroscopically and clinically, and you can appreciate the subluxing perineal longus tendon. At this point in time, I put the perineal longus back into position. I deepened the groove. I did a perineal tenodesis, both proximally and distally, and then I packed allosync expand around my bone graft. I use headless compression screws posteriorly and anteriorly for fixation on this. You can see the pre and post operative comparison showing increased height of the patient's hind foot. At two month follow up, the patient began weight bearing. She was pain free. She didn't develop a lateral wound and you can see our post operative x-rays here. So in summary, these are two cases that I used allosync reconstruction wedges for large bone deficits. Allosync wedges are made out of dense cancellous bone. You can hydrate them with BMC or ACP like I did in this case. Allosync Expand is demineralized cortical fibers, which are great for filling deficits. In this case, I used BMC to hydrate. I also highlighted the use of Arthrex screws, both headed and headless compression screws in this case. Thank you.